We're doing spreadsheets and looking at Microsoft Excel and we're focusing on the average if and the average ifs function. So if you remember the sum if function, you can go watch our video on that and you will find that this average if function works very similar to the sum if function. In fact, if you know it, it's, this is going to make a lot more sense. So for the average if function, you would use this function whenever you want to find the average of a range of numbers, but only the average based on a range or a set of criteria. So you don't want to find the average of all the numbers, just certain numbers that meet a criteria. So what are the parameters that you need? Well, you need three main parameters. You need the range, a range of cells. You need a criteria. And then you need another range. And let me explain what this is going to be. So the first range is where you are going to look for your criteria. So you might look in through a range of cells and say, we are looking for a particular criteria in this range of cells. So the first parameter is what, where is this range of cells that we're looking at first? The second parameter is the criteria, which is what are, what is the rule that we are looking for? What's the criteria that we're looking for in that range of cells that we just mentioned in the first parameter? And if we find any cell that's in that range that meets that criteria we will then move to the corresponding value in the average range which is that last parameter and find the average of it in other words we will add up all those values and divide it by how many values there are to find the average so let's take an example let's say we're going to look through b5 to b12 uh, okay let's pretend that that is a range of ages okay and then we want to find a criteria of greater than equal to 50. So we want to find the average of something of all those who have an age of 50 or more. So B5 to B12 will be a range of ages and we are looking for any age that's greater than equal to 50. And then let's say the average range is D5 to D12. You see it corresponds with the first range. It goes from 5 to 12, 5, so it matches quite nicely. Let's pretend that that range is a range of salary. So this formula would find the average salary of all those who have an age of 50 or more. So we are finding the average of specific examples, specific values. So let's apply this in Excel. So here to remind us, we must have a range of cells that we want to look for the criteria, then the criteria that we're looking for in that range, and then which cells are we going to average based on that if the criteria is met in that particular block. Okay, so the average amount raised by the males. So we want to find the average amount raised, but only of the male. So we're actually looking here first. We're looking at the gender first. If we find a male, then we're going to move across to the, the amount raised and try average all of those values. So let's click on this block over here, and we're going to say equals average if. So we don't want to find the average of all the numbers, just the average of certain ones. So the first is my range. I want to find the average of just those ones. Do, 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 do. So there we go. So just that blue block, we want to find the average of, or not the average, we want to look in that range. What are we looking for in that range? We want to find the males. How do you know if it's a male? If it's an M. So my criteria in this case is just an M. So look for all the M's in that C column. If we find a match, if we find there's an M, then we must move across to this column, which is my average range, which I'm going to select this block, which is the average amount. So you can see that's E4 to E23, and that's C4, to, so it matches quite nicely, it corresponds quite nicely, it's got an equal match, so whatever value is in this range, there's an equivalent or corresponding value in this particular range. So look in the C column for an M. If you find one, then move here and only take that corresponding value for the average. So over here, we can see that the average males are given 247 Rand and 14 cents. Let's do another example. The average points by the grade 12s. So average if, so we find the average of particular examples. So we are looking first if they are in grade 12. So we're first looking at the grade column. What are we looking for? We're looking at all the grade 12. So we're looking for any value that equals a 12. So we can just write the word 12, actually. And if we find a 12 in this D column, then we must calculate the average points. So that's this column over here, which is column F. And 4 to 23, 4 to 23, there's a nice correlation there. 
So if you find a 12 in this D column, then move to the F column and find the average of the corresponding points. So the average points is 4.8888. Okay. Last example, average amount raised by those with five or more points. So again, we're finding the average of specific scenarios. So we use an average F. Where are we looking first? We're looking at the points first. We first want to see if they got five or more points and then average the amount range. So we're looking at the F column first in this case. And what's my criteria? You got five or more points. So the criteria is greater than equal to five. But remember, your criteria must always be in double quotes. Just like a sum if, just like a count if. So look in this F column for any value that's greater than equal to five. And if you find a match, move to the corresponding E column, which goes from E4 to 23, which is the same as the F, and find the average of the amount range. So if you've got five or more points, those people gave it, have a raised amount of 222 Rand 91 cents. Okay, so that's the average if formula. Now the average ifs, lots of s's at the end there. I sound like I'm from Slytherin here. If the average ifs formula is used when you've got lots of criteria to check, not just one. And there is a bit of a shift in how we understand the average if function to the average ifs. And it's very similar to the sum if and sum ifs difference. So in the average if, we had range criteria and then the range that we wanted to find the average of at the end. We need to shift things first when we do the average ifs. That is slightly different. You need to move that average range to the front. That is going to be the first parameter in this case. And then the range criteria simply shift up a little bit. So it's in the different order using the average ifs. You first list the range that you're going to find the average of, and then you're going to do the range and the criteria. And then if there's another criteria, that's the first criteria that you're going to look at. Then if there's a second criteria, you simply put a comma at the end of the second criteria, and you will then say the range and the criteria of the next criteria. And if that's all you've got, then you put a bracket at the end, and that's the end of the formula. Or if there are other criteria, maybe there's a third or a fourth, you can then go comma, and then range criteria, range criteria, range criteria, as long as you keep that sequence. So first look in this range for this criteria. So that's how the average ifs works. So let's have a look at how it applies in Excel. So let's remind ourselves, average ifs, the average range first, then the range criteria, range criteria, range criteria, and so on. So first example, the average amount raised by females in grade 10. So we're finding the average of specific ones. We want to find females in grade 10. So there's two criteria. So that's why we're going to use an average ifs. And we are first going to find the average range. What are we finding the average of? We want to find the average amount. So we look at that first. So we're going to find the average amount first. So we're going to select what we're going to average first. Then we go to our criteria. Range criteria, range criteria. So the first criteria is females. So we're going to look in the gender column, column C. And it also matches 4 to 23, 4 to 23. What are we looking for in the C column? We're looking for the letter F for female. And my second criteria is the grade. So we're going to look in the D column here. That's my second range. And what are we looking for in there? We're looking for the number 10. So any 10 female. You could swap these two around. So you could do D10 and then CF. Um, that won't make a difference. It doesn't matter which order. As long as you've got the correct range with the correct criteria next to each other so look so we're only going to average the e column if we find an f in the c column and a 10 in the d column combined so in that case we can say that's the average amount by the tens females so average points of the 11s who raised 200 or more again two criteria so we can go average ifs what are we finding the average of first the average points so we select the points first comma what is our criteria? Let's do this back criteria first. So we can see it doesn't matter the order. Raised more than 200 rand. So we're going to look at the E column. That's my first range there that I'm going to look for a criteria. So that's what I'm going to average. This is where I'm going to look for a criteria. And in the E column, we want more than 200. So my criteria there is greater than 200. But remember, criteria must always be in 
double quotes. And then at the end of that, our second criteria is grade 11s. So we're going to look at the grade 11s. So we look at the grade column, D4 to 23, and my criteria there is for an 11. And remember, criteria must be in double quotes. So look in the F column. We want to find the average points, average those points, but only for those where the amount raised is 200 or more, or more than 200, and the grade is an 11. Okay, last example, average amount raised for those with three to five points. Now, that doesn't look like two criteria, but when you use greater than, less than, we can actually make two criteria. So let's try this example, equals average ifs, because I want to check all the points that are both greater than three and equal to three and less than five at the same time. So there are technically two criteria there. So we want to average the amount raised. So that's the amount raised. Boom, there we go. So that's what we want to find the average of. And we want to find all those where they got three to five points. So I'm going to select the points value. And my first criteria is that it must be greater than equal to three. So look in the F column for greater than or equal to three. But at the same time as well, you must look in the points column again for the second criteria. And that value must be less than or equal to five. And that way we can get between three and five. So average ifs, look at the amount raised. And for only those where the F column is greater than three and less than five at the same time. And there you can see the average is 207. So if we went through all of these, so we add that 371, that's a, that person got a, a 5. There is a 3 there, so that's 356. There's a 331. Three, uh, there's another 4, they got 165. So I'm, add, I'm writing out all the numbers of those who got between 3 and 5 points. So we over here, and we got, there's a 5, they, they donated 25 rand. There's a 4 that donated 83. So you can see the list. And the last one is 118. So there's a, I've just manually written down all the values of those who got, or the amount raised by those who got between 3 and 5. Now, if I find the average of just these numbers, you will see I get 207, which is the same value as that. So we can see that it is actually working. It's only taking those values into consideration. So that's how you do an average ifs. For more videos on Excel, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe, we'd love for you to subscribe and tell us what you think, leave a comment, you can also follow us on Facebook or Twitter, we'd love to hear from you, and remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.